Okay, the next question that we have here is, what is your opinion about the interfaith marriage? Father is Interfaith marriage. I'm not married, but I'm told that marriage isn't all peaches and cream, right? <laughs> Sometimes when you mix religions, it also adds to the mix in a very significant way. Um, the Catholic position is, we used to frown on this quite heavily, um, but I'm going to be very honest with you now. Uh, here in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, we are witnessing an ever-increasing number of not inter-church marriages, meaning when a Catholic would marry another Christian of a different uh, denomination, but interfaith marriages. I myself, in my position at the Archdiocese as the uh, Ecumenical and Interpolist Officer, I have officiated at weddings between a Catholic and a Hindu, a Catholic and several Catholics and Jews, and one Catholic and one Muslim. Now, I think that um, it takes a certain individual, two individuals, that are very open to each other, that obviously must be very much in love with one another, uh, to make such a marriage work. The question always comes down to this, how will you raise the children? And that has to be, from my perspective, that has to be decided before the marriage takes place. Don't wait until you're in the marriage and say, well, I'll bring her around to my way or she'll bring me, you know. <coughs> not going to work. I, I've handled the aftermaths of some of these situations where these questions were not determined ahead of time, and it's disastrous. From the Catholic perspective, we used to emphasize, used to require the non-Catholic partner in such a marriage to in effect abdicate any right they would have to raise any children that might spring forth from this marriage in their faith. In fact, we used to make them sign a paper to that effect. But we don't do that anymore. I mean, it was kind of, um, to use a Jewish term, put spa on our part, to, to um, think that we have some control over the non-Catholic partner. So what we do now is that we put the um, I don't want, well, we, we concentrate on the Catholic partner in such a marriage, and we ask that Catholic partner to do everything that they can to see to it that any children that come from that marriage are raised Catholics. But again, to be brutally honest with you, sometimes it's the non-Catholic partner in such an interfaith marriage that is stronger than, in their faith than the Catholic partner. And wouldn't it be better that the children be raised in some faith, then to abdicate all responsibility and say, well, we, we won't raise a child as anything, and we'll let them decide when they're 18. Would you deny a child physical nourishment for 18 years? Why would you describe, why would you deny them spiritual nourish, nourishment for 15, 18 years? So these are complicated issues. I know of interfaith marriages that work. I've been a part of them, but it takes two special individuals it makes this marriage work. Thank you, Rafa. It's very nice. When I served as rabbi at Wilshire Boulevard Temple, uh, our community's standard regarding marriage was that we as clergy would not officiate at marriages between two people other than two Jews. And this, even in liberal reform Judaism, is much the the norm, um, although a lot of it depends on where you live, particularly in North America. Um, I'm no longer with Wilshire Boulevard Temple, so in that sense I'm, I'm free to practice how I, as a rabbi, feel um, I would best hold up the tenets of Judaism and, and the Jewish people. And a couple came to me very recently, um, an interfaith couple, and I ended up officiating at their wedding. And it was uh, very profound for me because I had to really think very carefully about what it meant for me to stand before Marilyn and Arthur and give them many 
of the Jewish vows and blessings, albeit one of them is not Jewish. But what I found was this, with this particular couple, the one who is Jewish, that person's Jewish identity skyrocketed because they felt they were so welcomed by the rabbi. The person who wasn't Jewish, who described themselves to me as being uh, Jewish on the inside but having grown up in Baptist clothing, this person now felt welcomed like they never could have imagined. And as a result of that, the other partner said to me, I am committing to becoming Jewish. Now, unlike our Christian and our Muslim brothers and sisters, we Jews have a real basic problem. And it is our numbers. We are shrinking. We are one-fifth of one percent in the world, okay? One-fifth, take a penny and imagine taking that penny and cutting it into five pieces. One piece are all the Jews on the earth. We need to preserve our people. And there is a belief that officiating at interfaith marriages under certain circumstances allows for our people's life and culture to continue, if not maybe, hopefully, even thrive. Um, I will just take, um, not exception, but I just want to make a little amendment to what um, my good friend at the end of the table down there said. Because for us, oftentimes, we encounter a couple for marriage where children are not an issue, right? Alexei, either by virtue of their age, by virtue of, you know, biological issues, by virtue of desire. So we who have the privilege of, of sanctifying marriage um, and also conferring it legally, and those are two very different things as we've all been learning here in California, we have to think very carefully about our role as leaders in our faith tradition and the role we play in sanctifying that marriage, how may it bring our faith stronger to the people we're sanctifying it for, or how may it help our people as a whole. How about Brian? So I want to indulge I'd like to make two quick um, observations about the previous question about uh, women empowerment as it dovetails to the issue of intermarriage, at least in my opinion. Uh, first is, I, I find it ironic, again, the, the dichotomy between political and religious, that in both the state of Israel and in other Islamic countries, the highest officer of the, of the land, the prime minister, the president, has been a woman, but there is still the debate as to, religiously, whether they're able to be uh, leaders of prayer. Um, and in fact, in rabbinic Judaism, after the destruction of the Second Temple in, in 70 CE, uh, you know, it's kind of anachronistic. There were women prophetess who led prayers and, and we follow in tradition. That being said, in the Bible, um, the patrilineal descent, the faith of the father determined the child's faith. In modern Judaism in all streams, it determines, it's determined by uh, matrilineal with a revision uh, in the last generation in Reform Judaism. Um, I contrast with uh, my friend and colleague, Rabbi Stein. I, I personally, I don't think that we need to be apologetic. I appreciate uh, Father Alexei's candid sharing because sometimes we try to be too politically correct and be universalistic. And when we try to be too universalistic, we water down our own particularistic nature. And besides, although it's, it's definitely prevalent, the issue of demography in the Jewish society, to me, marriage is, there's so many different obstacles, and for someone to preserve their faith, whatever the religious faith may be, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing to, to find a partner and to share that faith together. So, uh, personally speaking, I would not uh, officiate at, uh, a marriage between uh, a Jew and, and a non-Jew. The same way that I would respect 
the particularistic nature of uh, another tr religious tradition. Um, I think we, once we start being candid and embrace a particularistic nature, then we can actually be at the table in, in a more clear and transparent way.